Hello and welcome to this first lesson on Python Flask. In this video we'll describe exactly what Flask is, how to install it and of course how to run a simple application using Flask. Now first and foremost we call Flask a micro framework. A framework in the first place is essentially a collection of tools, softwares and libraries all collaborating together, helpful to the developer, that allows us to develop applications in a more structured and defined way. It allows us to adhere to best practices and of course not having to reinvent the wheel. In this case we call Flask a micro framework because it's not as fully featured as another library such as Django would be. It provides instead the found fundamental building blocks of a web application and allows more flexibility on the developer's parts in terms of implementation details. Now let's go through and first install Flask. I like to always install a virtual set up a virtual environment before I set up any work and in terms of your project this is extremely important because it it will allow you to isolate your Python modules to a specific environment and not install it system wide. So let's activate our environment. Okay so we have our Python environment set up. Let's go ahead and install Flask using pip So let's go through exactly what we've done. We've set up a virtual environment using the Python shell, uh, Python interpreter 3.6. We call the environment env, and we've also activated it on this line. And we've used pip, Python's package manager, to install Flask. To verify Flask has successfully installed, we can just go into our Python shell, import Flask, and that should give us no errors at all. So let's quit out of this, and let's start writing some code. Now I'm going to create a file called app.py I'm going to open it with my text editor. You could use whatever text editor you want. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to get a split view set up. Okay, now let's start writing some code. So first things first, with every Python Flask project, we're going to import a class called Flask, capital F, from our module called Flask, the one we just installed using pip. Every Flask file starts off with the declaration of this line. What we're doing here is creating a Flask object and assigning it to a variable called app. This app variable is now going to let us create, structure our Flask project. To illustrate this, let's write our first example. Here we're going to create what's called our route. We define our function, let's call it index, and we're going to return, of course, hello world. I'll go through in a moment what exactly this is doing. For now, let's actually run our project, or our, our application, and to that we go app.run. In our terminal, python app.py will do the job. This is going to run a simple web server for our application and it is running at the host at this address. So 127.0.0.1 or in other words local host at port 5000. To exit out of this, control C. Now let's go to our web browser and type in localhost and there we go, hello world. If you don't, now let's go to our numbered address and we still get hello world. If we close our application and refresh our page, the site cannot be reached because we closed down our web server. Now let's go back, refresh. Let's make a change in our function called index and let's, instead of returning hello world, let's return hello Hussein, which happens to be my name. If we refresh our page, notice nothing is updated. In this case, we need to close our application and rerun it again. Hello, Hussein. That might become tedious once you're doing a lot of development, so a nice way to get around this is to set a parameter equal to true. So now whenever we make a change, so let's close our application, rerun it again, notice we have extra output, debug mode on, 
And now, let's refresh our page, nothing's happened. If we go back to Hello World, it automatically does it for us. We, have still, we, st we still have to refresh the page, but we do not need to close our application. This is much more convenient in the long run. Okay, so that's how we can run with the debugger turned on. Let's go through this bit of magic. First things first, this as simple as a special construct in Python, syntactic sugar for what we call a decorator. I'll provide a link to a video on decorators, and hopefully once you've watched that video, it's, it will describe this much more succinctly and it will make more sense. Essentially, whenever we go to this specific route, by route we mean in the URL, forward slash, we run this function, and this function will return this string. Let's change this route to let's say slash home. And now if we go to slash home, we're going to get hello world. And if we go back to index, we're going to get URL not found. That's because we have not defined the route for forward slash alone. Notice how we are returning a string. Every function of these will need to return something. For example, if we just declare a variable and return nothing, then our web page will start to complain. This output we see here, you'll get used to it. This is our debugger output from Flask. And as you can see from the type error, the view function did not return a valid response. So we should always return a string or some other some other constructs which we will learn in future videos. That is all for this video, thank you, and I look forward to having you in the next video.